Hey, when will I be cheap famous? I don't know. Probably never. And what I do know, I'm still Angie. This is still 4F Beauty. And I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to put this intro in black and white or not. Because this is a viewer requested look. Um, I did a film not so long ago called I've Had Enough. Um, normally comments from trolls are water off a duck's back. But when they use the kind of language that I don't want my god kids seeing. Angry god mama bear rears her head. And words were said. Uh, but what I overwhelmingly got from that film, as well as an awful lot of support from my 4F family, was people requesting me to film the makeup look that I was wearing during that particular response video. Um, I really wasn't in a mood that day for filming a tutorial. I was Oh, so angry. Wrath was... Yeah, let's just say I'm a Torian, born in the year of the tiger and the hour of the dragon. I'm half Welsh, there's a dragon on the flag for a reason. According to my granddad, that's what Welsh women turn into when they get pissed off. And boy, was I pissed off in that film. So, in this film, I am much happier. So if you want to find out exactly how I created this particular look, Sammy is here to confirm that it's now time to grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and get comfy. Because here it comes. Hey my lovelies, how are we doing? Right, you will have seen from the intro, is that just like typical of my phone? The minute I press record, it's been quiet all morning, I press record, people want me. <sighs> right, you will have seen in the intro that I'm showing you how to create a look that you will have, if you've watched my I've Had Enough film. Um, I was so angry that particular day that my god kids had been exposed to the sort of language and terminology that the trolls had used that I was I was oh, in no fit state to film a tutorial but I've had a lot of people ask me to film the look because they liked it so much it's super simple I literally used two shadows. One from Sample Beauty uh, Equalizer Palette and one is an individual shadow that I got from VE Cosmetics. Don't forget I have a discount code with them. Um, so yeah it's, it's a super easy look to recreate so I decided that's what I'll do today. I wear a slightly different lippy. Last time I wore uh, the Luna Beauty liquid lippy, but I have since managed to pick up a new Ciate glitter flip in shade Iconic, which is this sort of navy blue, which I think will look particularly cute with it. So. This remains a teaching channel, 
So I zoom right in close to just my eyes on screen when I'm filming. Number of reasons for this. One, it's easier to cut out when I grimace and wince with pain, making it less obvious for you, I hope, when there are cuts. Um, and also, regardless of what you watch me on. So if you've not got that great an eyesight and you watch me on your phone screen, you can still see exactly what's happening, okay? It does mean when I look down to pick up more pigment or clean a brush or whatever, you get a lovely shot of my widow's peak just there. But that's a small price to pay really, isn't it? Um, I also go at a speed that beginners can keep up with because of my chronic pain. If I try and go any faster, it's just not going to happen. Feel free to speed me up if you want to. I'm about to insert a clip in just a moment where I talk you through the differences between hooded and deep set eyes. Now, I see people all the time, including big beauty gurus, go, oh, I've got hooded lids, and I look at it and I think, mm, no, you've got deep set eyes. There is a difference. Admittedly, the way that makeup wears on them is very similar throughout the day because of the folds in the eye where the skin's rubbing against itself but the actual method of application that you need to use is different in order to get the best result for your eye shape so the clip that I'm going to insert will be up close and personal just my eyes on screen I'll talk you through how to work out which shape I you have and let you know the best way to apply your shadows to get the most longevity out of them. Okay? Awesome. I will see you at the other end of this clip ready to apply some pigments to my eyelids. Here's your clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Chrome Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream but it has a powdery finish so unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't use any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over mm -hmm with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease I have to cut onto the upper lid not just through the socket and if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. 
with my brows relaxed and looking straight forward you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner you can't see a lot of it but you can see it so I haven't got hooded lids it's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus if I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight and if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get so what are the workarounds if you have hooded lids get a brush something like this or a pencil brush sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using just sit back relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Right, I'm going to use the shade from the Equalizer 2 palette from Sample Beauty, Male, which is the black sparkly shade there. I'm going in with a fluffy brush which is stained from the last time I used this shade on it so I keep this for my deeper pigments now so as always I hold the brush at the end to put as little stress on my lid as possible and as always I do the Viennese Waltz blend which is Natural turns towards the nose, a fleckle when we get there, and reverse turns to come back again. This gently manipulates the lid around, so if you do have slightly looser lids, if you just do that windscreen wiper and you find you get the telltale white stripes, this will help eliminate that. Right, ready? Let's start applying this. The beauty of this is because I'm only using the one shade. There's no worry about blending colours together, which is quite nice actually. And this shade blends really nicely. Obviously I'm spending some time just buffing this top edge out to get it as soft as possible before going back in and building the pigment up. Um, how's your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. If it hasn't, then I sincerely hope that tomorrow is better for you. And if you were at the start of your day, then I hope it's as fabulous as you are. Now the difference with this one is we're going to run this shadow all over the lid as well. Now I always do my eyes first. I can't see a damn thing. I hope I'm still on screen. Oh, just. I know this can look a bit messy at this stage 
But this is why I always advocate doing your eyes first. Now I'm just going to gently build some of that colour up on the edge there without losing the nice gentle fluffiness that we've done. Yes, I was super angry the day that I did this particular look. But it is a really nice look. I mean, it would be great for a dramatic night out or Halloween or, you know, going as fancy dress as Maleficent or something like that. It can be difficult sometimes with a black to get the edges nice and soft like this without blending it with another shade. That's why I chose to use the shade in here. If you don't know about the Equalizer palettes, they have a matching matte and shimmer shade. So there is a black matte in this palette. But um, it can be difficult blending out a deeper shade like this to get that fluffy edge without having a lighter shade to buff into it. I didn't want to detract from the depth of colour, <clears throat> which is why I decided to use the shimmer side of it. Uh, because as soon as you add shimmer pigments to a matte shade, it does make it easier to blend. That's why you'll see a lot of palettes will only offer purples and blues and greens in shimmer format or satin format <clears throat> because they can't formulate a matte that doesn't go patchy. Whereas you can see from this, it blends out beautifully at the edges here. And yet you can still build the shadow up to get that impact. I know I'm kind of looking like a panda at the moment. Trust the process. Now obviously with this eye, I do have to break my own rule about stretching the lid out. Because I have super deep creasing just here. And if I don't stretch the lid, what happens is that the pigment builds up loosely in those creases and then throughout the day falls into my eye and down my face, which is both painful and it ruins your makeup look, especially when you're using dark shadows like this. So sit back, just check that the shapes are the same bit more of a curve just there this side I think. There we go, that's better. The reason I do that is because you can randomly have one eyelid be a bit puffier than the other or I mean you can have that normally let alone when you've got fibro like I have. And that's why I always advocate doing each colour on both eyes before you move on to the next one because by the time you've blended okay normally I use like two or three colours at this point rather than just the one but by the time you've blended those together it can be difficult to ascertain um, where the discrepancy is if they don't line up it can be difficult to work out which particular shadow you need to change the shape of. Right, so I'm just cleaning this brush off on a clean washcloth. Um, I don't use colour switches on my brushes anymore. They're far, far too harsh. Um, absolutely kill your brushes. 
Right, just going to grab my pad with my cellar water on to just tidy the shape up a little bit just so I can see what I'm doing in terms of adding the next colour. Just sharpen that edge up a little bit there. Not too much because I still want a little bit of fluffiness about it. But because obviously you're not going to see a black wing if you decide you wanted a wing. You need to sharpen the edge if that's the particular style you were looking for. And yes, I could have used tape, but the way I see it is if the tape is sticky enough to stop pigment from going underneath the edge of it, then it's going to pull at your skin when you take it off. I don't do things like that. Right, now, as you know, never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. And uh, I bought some of her loose pigments in a pressed form just before Christmas. And the shade that I used was Thoth, which, as you can see, I hope, goes from a brilliant green to a really lovely deep blue. The other options that I have from her are Immortal, which is this beautiful purple that shifts from like a burgundy around here through purple. Then you get a blue shift just here as it goes through to a deeper purple. And I also have Quicksilver, which you think is gold, until you twist it and see the gorgeous greeny flip to it. So, as per the original look, I'm going to use the green. I do actually have a number of different shifting pigments uh, from Blush Tribe. I pressed Neelum, which is this gorgeous green to purple, as you can see. Um, from Oh My Glitter OMG. I've got Merbabe, which again is a purple blue. And I have Sunset, which is an orange gold. Uh, the only other sort of shifty one I've got is this is Crow and Pebble. This is the voice. Um, and then I've got this pink lemonade one, which just has a slight silver shift to it. So, I'm going to go into that green shadow with a flat brush and obviously a dry flat brush. you don't ever go into a pressed shadow with a wet brush ever. So I picked it up on the thing and now I'm going to give it a bit of a squirt. I'm just going to use this Makeup Obsession Fix Fit spray. You can use any spray. Just don't put a wet brush in a pressed pigment, okay? 
Now the ferrule here is wet so I'm going to tuck it into my knuckles and spin. It's the most effective way of drying it off so you don't get excess moisture coming down here and loosening the bristles otherwise you'll end up with a very expensive stick. And then I'm going to apply this over the black on my mobile lid. You can apply this just on top of eyeshadow primer but I wanted to give it a little bit of extra oomph by layering it over a black base. Just to increase the depth of the colours coming through. Hopefully, that's showing up just nicely for you. Now, dry off the brush, go back in, pick it up for the other eye. Now, what I do with the other eye in terms of causing as little additional damage as possible is I only stretch the eye out as far as I need to in terms of flattening the deep creasing. I don't put it out round to my ear roll. I apply the pigment to the inner part as quick as I can and then gently release the lid back. Don't just let it spring back. So. You can see I'm making sure that's really well blended onto the lid and gently letting go again. And then I'll just continue with the rest of the lid in the same way that I did my other eye. But you can see this lid has a lot more movement to it than my other eye did. And this is because this eye was pulled around when I was five, six years old at the old family hospital. So we're talking 40 odd years ago now and that's the damage that was caused. So please don't pull your eyes around any more than you absolutely have to. Because once you get damage like this, once it shows up, it's too late. There's nothing you can do to reverse that damage unless you have some form of surgery which if that's what you want to do fab you do you but the way i see it is i've earned every line and wrinkle on my face every single one of them is there because of something I've experienced or gone through or lived through. So, the way I see it, I should just let it get on with it, really. Knocking everything all over the place. But then, are any of you really surprised at that, if you know me? You know. What an absolute blooming klutz I am. Right, lovely ones, I'm going to pause you <clears throat> while I go and chuck some foundation and bits and bobs on and I'll be back to finish this eye look off with you. Now, it's going to be absolutely instant for you, but I've got a little while to wait. So, I'll see you right now. Hey, my beautiful ones, I am back. I have done my soap brows and used the black very lightly through my brows and now I'm going in with, I've had people ask me for uh, recommendations for an alternate brush 
to the one that I always use for my under eye, which is my Tarte Graveyard Girl brush. One that I've found that gives a very, very similar result is this e.l.f. eyeshadow C brush. See, it's still chunky and it's, it's flat top but it's just slightly domed off at the edges but it does give a very similar result in terms of being able to get under those lower lashes. So, I'm just going to dip into this sparkly black again, male. I'm just going to run that very softly along the lower lash line. Because obviously I don't really want it to end up down on my cheeks. Yes, I always flinch this side because obviously being blind in this eye I don't have any peripheral vision so I'm relying very much on a viewfinder which is rather uncomfortably far away from me at the moment when I don't have contact lens in or glasses on and muscle memory regular viewers can tell you how often I poke myself in the eye as one or other of those things lets me down Okay, so that's basically the eye look done. I just need to add in some highlighty bits now. So, for that I'm going to use a lip brush. And, not being funny, uh, I've had this brush well over a decade now. Possibly even more. And I'm just going to go into a pale gold champagne highlight just for under the brows there, under the tail of them. Just to have a bit of lift. And then go into a more white one. For the inner corner here, just to really add some light. Obviously, if you have a green tinged highlighter, you can use it here. Uh, I do have one, but it's by the Unmentionable, so I don't use him on my channel anymore, unfortunately. Right, my beautiful watch, shush now. Right, my beautiful ones, I will pause you, chuck some more highlight on my face, put some mascara on, pop that lippy on, do something with the hair, and I'll be back with my finished look. See you right now. So there we go. That is the finished, I've had enough, look. Um... You can see it's so striking. I mean, you don't have to go for a dark lip with it. You could do a really beautiful blood red lip like Max Ruby Woo. Um, you could do a more neutral lip with it and just have the power be in the eyes. But I've got to be honest, for me, for this look... If you're going this powerful, I know it's normally eyes or lips, not both. But for me, this look needs strong colour on the lips. Um, as I said, that strong colour doesn't have to be dark. You could do a hot pink. You could do a bright green. Um, you know, there's, there's so many options of colours that you could pair with this look and likewise of course I used green on my lid you can use any colour you want on your lid you could put glitter on it if you want to do you know there are there are limitless options to how you can tweak this so that the look is 
what suits you best. So, uh, for those of you who've been asking, as promised, here it is. I hope you liked it. Um, and if you do decide to recreate it yourself, please tag me because or send me a copy of it um, on Insta or through Twitter because I would really love to see how you interpreted this look. Right, my lovelies, if you're one of my 4F babies, please double check you're still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing you. But they're leaving my films in your suggested feed so it's not obvious that you've been deleted. It's also worth double checking your uh, notification status because mine keeps getting knocked back to personalised rather than all. Which means I get none, basically. Highly frustrating. Not just for me, but for all the channels that you follow. It's worth, if you have half an hour, just going through and double checking them all. Once you've done that, let me know in the comments how you would interpret this. What colour would you choose for your lids? Would you go for green like me? Would you go for a dual chrome? Or would you choose a glitter? Would you choose a multi-chrome or a single ordinary shimmer? Um, what lipstick would you choose to pair with it? I really would be interested to know. Right. If, however, you are new here and you've tripped over me some other way, hi, hello, welcome, I hope you enjoyed it here. Uh, this is a pretty good indication of the kind of nonsense, really, that you get out of me on, a, you know, a filming day. I blether on about everything and nothing in particular in what I'm told is a very relaxing and calming voice. So, if this seems like the kind of thing you wouldn't mind watching a few more of, it'd be lovely if you want to join the 4F family because we are the nicest family on YouTube. It is super easy to do. You hit that red subscribe button, you turn it grey, then you ring my bell, ring my bell, and choose all notifications in the hope that YouTube will actually pull their finger out and send some. In the meantime, if you've got a bit of time to kill and you need a little bit of me time, just need to unplug for a bit, as well as this rather ample backside upon which I am currently perched, I have a rather ample back catalogue of films you can watch. Do you see what I did there? Isn't that a good link? No, maybe? Okay, moving on. Uh, basically, I've said it for what feels like forever now, but uh, grab a drink, grab a snack, pick a playlist, put your feet up, press play and just chill out for as long as you need. Right, my lovely ones, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fine. Us, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.